We'll say goodbye to the sea and we're going to start going back towards the vehicle through the woods. Climb up this hill here, up this, these stairs and the stones and everything else. And um, I want to talk about the what the real agenda is behind this whole illegal immigration thing. Notice I said illegal immigration. There is such a thing as immigration. People intend to come to a country and they want to live like the people there and whatever. And uh, I'm not going to argue about all that stuff. I'm just going to say that this video is about people coming here illegally, not caring about the culture, not caring about our laws and our rules. And I've seen that stuff for years. Um, and it really makes me angry. I remember for all my Pennsylvania viewers, southeastern Pennsylvania, Lancaster and Berks County, Lebanon County, that area. I was born and raised in Lancaster County. And uh, there was a river, the Tulpahawken River. And um, these illegals would come there and there was an area that was delayed harvest, it was called, um, fly fishing only or ultralight spinning rods, which is what I used. And um, these illegals would come in and they would literally take trash bags of fish out of that area. Completely Ill illegal, poaching. And uh, most of the guys that fished there, including myself, we were strict catch and release. Uh, because it's the right thing to do in a special area like that with game fish, but mainly because the uh, Topahawken River goes through Blue Marsh Lake. Um, Army Corps of Engineers dammed up the one area and created Blue Marsh Lake. And Blue Marsh Lake has a lot of outboard motors cruising around, which makes for very high mercury levels. So actually the illegal aliens, they think, ha ha, stupid Americans, with all their rules. You can only eat, you should only eat uh, two fish out of the Tulpahawken River every month. Oh, not where we come from. Where we come from, we'll just come down and we'll fish and we'll take as many as we want. Well, then you're going to have very high mercury levels in your blood and uh, you're going to die. You're going to get cancer. Good one. Um, See, that's the whole point. A lot of these illegals, they come here and they just think, Americans are dumb, Americans are greedy, stupid people, and we can just kind of make our own laws and make our own rules and whatnot. Um, that's not advisable. America, the old America, has a long history of rule of law and just laws that come from the Christian Bible um, that are based on scripture, unalienable rights uh, that come from God. And if you want to be intelligent and you want to move here, then you better learn to respect those laws. That's what you need to do. But uh, what's the real issue with this illegal alien thing? Uh, all these immigrants coming in and all throughout Europe. Well, it's being done on purpose. And I'm going to just not mince any words here. I'm just going to say it as it is. What's really going on? There's a war to kill off white people. Wasps. White Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Because you see the end times kingdom that the Bible describes is one of iron and miry clay. Roman and miry clay is a reference to Israel, to Jews that have mingled themselves. Uh, you get to the later part of the Old Testament, the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, they're being rebuked by God for mingling. <sighs> Tight little fit in through there. Whew. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of breath here. Got a lot of weight on me here with the camera bag. There's uh, my camera equipment, plus uh, um, 
shall I say, as one YouTuber says it, uh, a seed dispenser as well as seeds, Liberty Seeds. Um, and it's not a polymer uh, seed dispenser. It's a 1911 seed dispenser. I'll leave it at that. But um, this illegal immigration thing is being designed. You don't see them sending illegal immigrants into Hamitic countries or Shemitic countries. The illegals are being brought into historically white uh, Anglo-Saxon countries like that. I mean, where are the uh, millions, tens of millions of illegals pouring into Russia? I don't see them. And I consider Russian people to be Northern European. Don't get me wrong, but what I'm saying is uh, the Catholic Church doesn't have a whole lot to worry about when it comes to the um, uh, Russian Orthodox system because the Russian Orthodox system is already kind of in bed with the Roman Catholic Church. They both overthrow the scriptures with their traditions, which they have created, so they're not really a threat. Um, you never saw any kind of real extremely strong world-changing Bible-believing movement coming out of Russia, um, unfortunately. Russian men are strong men, don't get me wrong, but uh, not really a threat to the Vatican um, or Jesuitry. Hold on a second here. Yeah, that way. All right, but I'm gonna read from the scriptures here. Um, I want to make sure I get some Bible into the video here. So it's not just me talking. Acts chapter 17, we'll go there. Hopefully the wind's not too bad. I like to do these walk and talks. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback. People like them as well because it's not just a thing of me in the office or standing out there with my camera on a tripod. It's actually like you get to you know, go for a walk with me. The scenery changes. So you're not just looking at my face the whole time. That's a terrible punishment, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Acts chapter 17. <sighs> Getting there, one-handed. Really neat down here. It's kind of weird. We first came to Washington County. We were amazed at how you have, you know, I always think of the ocean as being sort of a tropical place. Like I said in another video, I've been to the Caribbean down in Costa Rica with all the jungles and everything. And so in my mind, I think ocean, I think that, you know, kind of a warmer tropical place. And then we came here to the ocean in Northern Maine and it's a rather, uh, you know, pine trees and blueberries and uh, cold salt water, kind of an interesting situation. But um, Acts chapter 17, beginning in verse 26, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Well, we're all of one blood, brother. Doesn't matter. There is no such thing as a, you. We can be citizens of the world as Christians. We don't need to be care about national boundaries. Then what do you do with that verse? that God has set the bounds of their habitation. God has natural boundaries. Um, the little Sunday school song when I was a boy, you know, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Um, I fully believe that. Yeah, all, God is no respecter of person. All races, all kindreds, ethnicities, they're all loved in the Lord's sight. Um, he made a special covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and his physical seed. That is true. But um, all kindreds are precious in the Lord's sight. There are special things about each one. 
And that's why God wants those distinctions preserved. And you see, when you go to a, a nation where there's, it's not just uh, mingled and mixed up and whatever else, uh, there's not a whole lot of different religions um, to study and whatever. Uh, it's just the ways of certain people, ancient ways and things. And you can learn that pretty quickly and you can talk to them about the Lord. I'm sure that uh, when my Christian ancestors came here to America in 1720, um, they probably had a pretty easy time of it. There weren't a lot of cults back then. Coming to talk to the Native American people, and I was raised very much with a lot of Native American uh, ways of foraging, and as I've said in other videos, you know, I went to Pequay Valley High School. The Pequay Braves, you know, was our sports team. And, um, <laughs> and so I was used to being around Native American types of things. Went to the I used to hang out at the Susquehanna River. Crawl underneath this. Sorry. And uh, Susquehannock State Park. Up here we have the Passamaquoddy, the Maliseet, the Penobscot Nation. I live in Penobscot County. Um, I went to fault for the uh, native indigenous people to keep Wolfton away from mining and ruining their ancestral hunting and fishing grounds. Um, I'm all for that. And I, I am a Japhetic man. God shall enlarge Japheth and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. Prophecy given in the book of Genesis. Well, my ancestors came here for religious freedom, but we didn't come here to bring our European ways and force it on the native indigenous people. Uh, others did that, um, of the Catholic variety. But, uh, I believe in preservation of culture and respect and tolerance and diversity. I believe in all of that stuff. But you see, that's what they hate. Because the first video I did today, I talked about their declaration of interdependence. They want to bring all people together. They want to make a new Tower of Babel, which will be the Antichrist Kingdom. That's what they're looking forward to. And that's why they hate me. I'm the problem. White Anglo-Saxon Protestant preachers. I am the number one threat to their system because I tell people that they have rights that come from God and that you can't put liens on those rights. They're unalienable. You can't pass laws, in other words. And you can come out here and you can be independent of the system. I don't want some satanic government of free Masonic devils coming around and telling me that I need permits to come out here and a license and need to come and check in and check out and whatever else. No, thank you. Uh, I like to be independent. I don't like people telling me what to do, when to get up and what food I can eat and whatever else. I believe in liberty and freedom. And you see, liberty of conscience is a Bible-believing concept. It is not an atheistic concept. Atheism ultimately teaches that uh, your rights should be taken from you if you don't agree with the system. If you're uh, not believing in evolution, well then uh, you must be a danger. And you are a religious fanatic and you should have your freedoms taken from you. Um, I don't agree with that. don't agree with that at all. And uh, so, but, it's like we're getting back out here to some running water. Yeah. I don't know if we went the right way or not. <laughs> we might have gone the wrong way. Maybe not. But um, I just think that this whole illegal immigration thing, I mean, we have to wake up to the fact, brethren, that there are people out there that are anti-white. They hate white people. It's kind of weird to think on, but it's the truth. So... I'll get back with you here in a little bit to see what's going on with this trail thing. So, check back with you in a few minutes. All right, I'm back with you here. They wanted to go down to see a bog brook, it was called. And um, doing the balancing act here again. If you can see this, probably not. You can kind of see it behind me there. But uh, getting back to what I was saying, um, we have to realize uh, that we are 
literally being attacked just because we're white out there to all my fellow wasps out there, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. And it doesn't matter what other race you are, you should look and you should say, hey, you know what, that's not right. If I saw black brethren being, uh, you know, they were, the media trying to demonize them and say black uh, Protestant types, you know, I'd defend you. Uh, we shouldn't be for any racial discrimination. Say, well, whites did such evil things. Well, that's a stupid statement. A lot of white people never did anything to persecute anyone like that. But if you fall for media propaganda, you'll believe that the whites caused all the evil in the world when the exact opposite is true. White Anglo-Saxon Protestant culture brought in a lot of the great things that we have today, including the rule of law. Um, but that's what they want to break down with all this illegal immigration. And uh, again, there are certain things that we're supposed to fight for. And um, the Lord Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 22 told his disciples that they were to sell their garment and buy a sword if they didn't have one. And uh, early on, the British people, and I'm sure the Germans as well, were allowed to have firearms. And then they were taken away in the past. And they, oh, it's okay, we don't need firearms. Well, how's that working out for you now? With your, with your speech being censored and men being taken and put in prison by the tyrants over there. Um, the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms is about protecting yourself from tyranny. It isn't about preserving your rights to go, you know, shoot a duck or something. That's not what it's about. And the idea, the concept there is more guns means more peace. You have um, the gun culture being very strong here in America, extremely strong. And uh, the gun manufacturers, they like that money and they just keep on putting out new guns and which is great because it keeps us free. Uh, you say, well, the Lord, uh, the Lord told us to buy guns or buy a sword, excuse me. But the modern equivalent of that, a defensive weapon would be the gun. And um, so, you know, if you're in the UK, well, or in other European countries, unfortunately, you've already had your rights violated, seriously. And if you can get those back someday by fighting for that, I hope you do, because you'd sleep a lot better at night. Um, you know, there are, I'm, right now I'm not worried about anything. Um, I could be attacked by two-legged cre creatures or four-legged creatures. I know how to use what I have, and I would use it. Um, as I'm driving back to Northern Maine tonight, here from the southeast, um, down east as they call it in Maine. As I'm traveling back on the road, some guy gets an attitude or whatever else. And he's a little bit nuts in the head or something. Um, coming off of a drug high and his brain isn't quite working right or whatever else. Can't be reasoned with. Well, I have the ability to defend myself and my wife. Um, I mean, right now, uh, literally when you come into this place, they said that uh, the sign says, there's limited cell phone coverage here. Uh, I don't have a cell phone, don't have a smartphone. Um, but if I did, and all of a sudden I round the corner and I hear my wife and my son up there screaming ahead of me, and I look and there's a bunch of bad guys touching them, uh, I can't just get my cell phone out. Probably wouldn't work, and even if it did, how long is it going to take for the police to get here? Well, then I guess I have to pull some kind of kung fu or karate or some kind of, no. Um, and I have pulled my firearm on different people over the years in a defensive manner. And thankfully, I've never had to shoot anybody. But I've been prepared. I've been ready. And uh, I would have done it if needed to. If I needed to. Um, there are certain aspects of life, brethren, that practical things that you have to think about. Uh, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Okay? 
Does that mean you have to work for a living? God can provide all your needs. See? You can get philosophical and say, well, you don't really need a firearm because God can protect you and defend you. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> If you can't get one, well, okay, you have to rely on that. But if you can get one, get one. Um, defend liberty, defend freedom. And uh, I'm seeing stuff about these illegals. Now they're just going around and, you know, they walk in through parks and city parks and they see a duck or Canadian goose or whatever and they're killing them. Just take them and eat them. They don't care. They don't mind at all. As I stated earlier about the illegals years ago, just taking out trash bags full of fish. They were too stupid to even realize that they were toxic. And you know, and we would look over at them and say, you know, you're not supposed to do that or whatever and just glare at us. Shut up, stupid American. Um, I've been in foreign countries. You don't do that to the people that live there. You show respect for the people that live there. But you know, American white men have been demonized so much over the years that people think that we're the, the devil's men or something else. Not realizing that all the civil liberties that are out there in the world uh, come from white men coming out and bringing out that stuff. I don't really care what you think about that, it's the truth. So, what's the satanic illegal immigration thing all about? It's about destroying white people and white culture. Um, that's what's standing in the way of their new world order that they want so bad. Um, men like me, preachers like me, and I know a lot of you appreciate me and what I do. You realize the sacrifices that I make um, I could just be out here today enjoying time with my wife and my son. This is part of what he wanted for his birthday, by the way, to come down here. And I could be out here just doing this and I'll get back to YouTube whenever I can. But I take my camera along and I want to talk to you about the Word of God as I'm walking along. So, and why? Why do I do this? Um, because I want to take every chance I can to get the truth out. The Bible says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And the days are evil now. I would say the only time when it was more evil than this was before the flood in the days of Noah. And uh, if you think that's an exaggeration, you say, well, it's not really that bad. Oh, well, you'll change your tune before real long because it's just going to get worse. But um, understand, my whole point of making this video, there's no compromise. You have to be willing to die for your beliefs. Stand up for what is right. You have a biblical precedent that there are supposed to be boundaries that people are not supposed to cross. Uh, nations are supposed to have the rule of law. Rulers are not supposed to be a terror to the good, but to the evil. Uh, they're supposed to bear the sword and be a revenger on all those who are, do are doing evil things. And these illegal immigrants, they're doing a lot of evil, evil things. You say, well, Brother Brian, shouldn't we think about preaching the gospel? How can we get the gospel to these Ill illegals? That doesn't even make any sense. They're in the country illegally. They're knowingly in sin, knowingly doing wicked things. Um, you say, well, you could preach to them, brother, and they could repent and, and get saved. Yeah, and then you know what they would do? If they truly, genuinely got born again and they understood the scriptures, they would follow Acts chapter 17, verse 26 through 27, and they'd get right back home to their home country. That's what they would do. You have no argument if you just want to do some kind of nice little thing of, brother, we should preach the gospel to these people and whatever. Well, preach the gospel to them if the Lord calls you to do it, if the Lord opens up a door of opportunity. But you know what? If they profess to be saved, you say, Get on the first airplane, get on the first boat, whatever, and get out of here. And uh, the other thing that I despise and hate about all this illegal immigration stuff is that these people come here, they're coming here for the free money. That's why they're here. Don't kid me. Oh, no, brother. No, they're here to, to work and take the jobs that the American people aren't willing to do. Nonsense. You know, and I know a lot of teenagers, by the way, 
um, they're saying, hey, you know something? I would do those jobs. But see, a lot of the farms that at one point in time would have employed young people, now those farms are saying, hey, we can employ these uh, illegals, and the government is giving them uh, free housing, free health care, free everything, so we don't have to pay that stuff. Love of money is the root of all evil. Don't ever forget it. But that's what's really going on. It is a satanic agenda. And if you really believe in God, you believe that God can protect you, then you don't just have a right to stand against illegal immigration. You have a duty, a God-given duty. And if you're a man, you better stand up and you better fight. Oh, brother, be real careful putting this stuff out. I don't care one bit. Don't even think about coming for me, goons. Especially you goons, you little effeminate sissy government goons over in the UK. Defending the actions of these Muslim perverts coming over there, murdering little girls. I don't care if they were going in some Taylor Swift thing, dancing to Taylor Swift music. I don't care, they're little girls. Some devil goes in there and kills them, cuts them up with a knife. Oh, we can't say anything against that. Oh, there's illegals in this apartment building here in America, and, and this is a sanctuary city, so we can't go after them. We can't enforce the law on the illegals. Um, if you have to take care of things, um, shut the camera off. Don't po post it online. I remember hearing some guy uh, years ago down in Texas, and uh, he shot a bunch of illegals or something and trespassed on his property, and a dumb nut calls his son on his cell phone and says, Hey, I killed a bunch of illegals. Could you come, please help me get rid of the bodies? Well, you stupid idiot. <laughs> you don't do that. Um, you know, everything is tracked and traced when you have it on the cell phone thing. You know, your smartphone. Don't talk about what you're doing. Okay, that's dumb. You know, and I don't even know. I mean, if they're just walking through the property, well, don't go out and just, you know, kill them. That wasn't right either. You know, I'm not advocating that. Uh, if they're a threat to you, okay, fine. If not, go on out, confront them with a gun, say, get off my land right now. You know, I confronted people years ago, had, uh, had them at gunpoint uh, because they were on my land, 4 o'clock in the morning. What are you doing back on my property? Went back past no trespassing signs, po purple posted paint, the whole thing. You have no right to be here. What are you doing? You know? And uh, they were polite, and they got out of there and everything, and I actually helped to pull them out of the snow where they were stuck. Um, but I didn't need to shoot them. Just you see a bunch of illegals walking across your land, you don't just open fire or anything. I was dumb. You know, again, justice here. Do things that are just. Do things that are right. Um, you know, if you're in the UK and you, you know, I wouldn't go near these protests or whatever. But uh, certainly you have a right to speak up against it. All right, well, we're back up to the parking area, just right up here, and um, battery died on me there, so, but just to finish up what I was saying there, um, brethren, we have to fight. We cannot just let them say that they're going to destroy the white nations out there, the historically Japhetic countries. That is wrong. It's of the devil, and um, fight. If it costs you your life, costs you your freedom, well, our uh, forefathers have gone through the same thing. You have to fight. So that's the message of this. You have a scriptural precedent to stand for boundaries. Scriptural boundaries. The bounds of our habitation. And uh, send these people packing. Alright? That'll be it. Thank you for watching.